Welcome to part 9 of the LS swap in my 97 Land Cruiser. Now you'd think that by part 9 I would be like ready to drive it or something close to that, but I keep finding more stuff to do. But I have checked a few things off the list and I'm going to show you what I've done. So it looks a lot further along because, well, I, I think it's further along. I've got a few things done. Uh, namely, I have wired both of my cooling fans. I installed a auxiliary pusher fan. I made the intake for it using a factory GM airbox and I relocated the washer reservoir. Um, these are all pretty self-explanatory things, but I'm going to show you what I've done. I also had several mistakes that I had to fix. And I'm going to show you those first because please do not make the same mistakes that I did. You're just going to waste your time. So in a previous video, I had talked about use, changing the power steering pump pulley to this Dorman 300-202. You have to do that because the factory GM pulley is too large of diameter and it makes contact with the steering box in these trucks, at least when you're using the uh, truck accessories. So this pulley is only 30 or 40 bucks. You can get them on Amazon. It's, uh, I think it's off a Ford 4.9 liter. However, uh, there is a right way and a wrong way to press it on, and this particular pulley, which is now trash, I pressed on the wrong direction because, well, I was probably tired and I wasn't paying attention. So make sure that you press it in. This side goes in towards the pump, and that side will stick out. Um, that should be, you guys are all going, well, duh. Well, I still made that mistake. And then the second thing I did is when I pressed the new pulley on, I went too far and totally just roasted the seal in the uh, power steering pump and sprayed fluid all over my garage. I came out the next morning and I had power steering fluid back to the garage door. It was great. So I had to change the power steering pump, which wasn't terrible, but wasn't a lot of fun. I put another used unit on and everything's fine. Belt lines up, no issues there, but a whole lot of time wasted for some pretty dumb mistakes. So the next big mistake I made was a t attempting to use a used water pump. Now, I've done this a whole bunch of times, and it always bites me in the butt. But for some reason, I still think I'm going to get away with it. So I ended up having to buy a new uh, water pump. I bought it off Rock Auto. Uh, there's a couple different kinds of them. Uh, you know, for a truck, there's a Gen 3 and a Gen 4. I ran a Gen 3. I didn't really know how I'd have to make the lines for a Gen 4, so... I just went with the Gen 3. Hindsight being what it is, I probably should have used a Gen 4 from like a 2007 and later. But uh, this one works and fits just fine. Again, I wasted, I totally wasted my time. I had this pump. I, I installed the used pump. I'm an idiot. I don't know what I did. But anyway, it's on now. And I also revamped the uh, heater hoses. I got rid of the factory Trailblazer heater hoses, which were just terrible. And I went to AutoZone and I got three feet of three quarter and three feet of five eighths. It's about the length you need to do this. And everything fits and looks nice. I put new clamps on it. So we should be leak free. Let's talk about the cooling fans that I have decided to use. The main fan is a puller fan. It's a Lincoln Mark 8 from a 92 to 95. It's one of the most powerful factory fans you can use. However, it is not a variable speed fan. It's just a single speed fan, even though there are three wires. One of them doesn't go anywhere. So I didn't want to buy a variable speed fan controller and the GM E38 PCM has two fan outputs. So I thought I might as well buy a secondary fan or an auxiliary fan. And I wanted something that I could mount on the AC condenser. That way, if I'm out, you know, four wheeling and it's hundred degrees outside, I can still have AC without a lot of airflow and without the really loud uh, Lincoln Mark eight fan, which is really loud. So I bought a 10 inch spal pusher fan. It's about 600 CFM and I mounted it to the condenser. It's pretty much straightforward. I had to pull the radiator forward to get these weird clips. I really don't like these, but there's not really a better way of doing this outside of spending a whole lot of time in fabrication, which I'm not that good at. So uh, this is about 80 bucks, I think on Amazon or eBay, but it does the job. I obviously don't have AC in it yet, so I don't know how well that works but I wanted to have a, a secondary fan. I didn't want to rely on just one fan. So for my main fan, uh, I think I've covered this in a previous video, but I want to talk about it now. Uh, I used a Lincoln Mark 8 radiator fan. Uh, this is one of the strongest and most powerful factory radiator fans that exist. So I, I think I got it from the salvage yard for 20 or 30 bucks. And I cut the shroud off of it and I mounted it to the factory fan shroud with some long bolts and spacers that I made. It was pretty easy. I wanted a clean install that was easy to get the fan in and out. And I also, I, you have to run a shroud. A shroud is the most important thing 
if you just put fans on the radiator, it doesn't really work nearly as well as having an actual fan shroud. So this is my poor excuse for fan wiring. I try to make it as clean and as water resistant as possible. I have the cover off the fuse box just to kind of show you how it works. But um, the main thing I need to cover here is on the wiring is the equipment used. So these aren't your traditional fan relays. These are actually 75 amp Bosch fan relays. They are from a W140 chassis, like an S-Class Mercedes. Uh, the main reason for using these is the Mark 8 fan. Now, in a constant situation where the fan is running, it only draws 15 or 16 amps. However, on initial startup, that can sp spike to 40 or 50 amps or more, depending on what the temperature is or if there's any issues with the fan. So, I did not want to have a situation where the fan drew so much amperage that I damage a relay. The last thing I want is to lose my cooling fans while I'm on a trail somewhere or while it's really hot or I'm in traffic. I just I cannot have it. So I overbuilt the cooling system wiring by using these 75 amp uh, relays. The other thing that you have to keep in mind is the type of fuses that you run for these fans. Now I use these JCAS fuses in this two fuse. It's a busman like little fuse box uh, the main reason behind that is JCAS fuses are slow burn. If I had 30 amp ATO or ATC fuses, the, that initial spike in amperage could potentially blow that fuse. So by using the slow burn, that keeps that from happening, yet the circuit is still protected. And the, you might be saying, well, why did you use two relays for two of the same big relays when one of the fans is just a little spal fan? Well, the main reason is if something happens with the relay for the Mark 8 fan or with the wiring for that, I can then transfer everything to the other relay and I still have my main cooling fan. The idea here is that I have a backup. Obviously, you want both of them working, but in a bad situation, I want to be able to at least get the vehicle out of there without overheating it. So that's why I ran two of the big relays. Again, these are like 30 or 40 bucks a piece. They're not very expensive. Yes, they're a lot more expensive than traditional relays, but they're a hell of a lot cheaper than having to tear the heads off something and put head gaskets on or get stuck somewhere and needing a tow. So I figured why not just make it to where it's bulletproof and have a backup plan while I'm doing so. So now we're going to test the fans. We're going to show you how they work. I'm going to go through this. It's probably going to ask me about 80 bajillion questions, all of which are going to be lies since... Well, we're dealing with a 97 Lexus and not... An 07 Yukon. There's the donor VIN, which will be changed at some point. Eh, let's just, let's, let's call it Yukon. Base model. And without all these options. All right. Diagnosis, control unit, magic control unit. Active test. Look at that. It says fan relay one, fan relays two and three, fan relays one, two, and three. So let's try this one first. And this allows me, I can like command the fan on and command the fan off. So we're going to do that right now. As you can, can barely hear me talk. That is the Mark 8 fan at full tilt. Granted, it's not running, so the voltage is a little lower. Let's turn that off. Go back and let's do the pusher fan. Uh, the little guy. But I just needed a little bit more. So the fans work perfect. Uh, a lot of scan tools you can go in there and test everything with. You don't have to wait for the engine to get to operating temperature. I, of course, like to test everything after I've done it just to verify that I didn't screw it up somehow. I'm sure you guys have already noticed that the washer reservoir is not in the factory location anymore. That's because I needed this space for the air box. So I searched high and low. I looked at probably 500 different washer reservoirs from different vehicles. Everything I could think of, and there probably is one that was better suited for this situation. However, I felt it best to reuse the factory washer reservoir. Now it is kind of contoured to the inner fender. So the best thing I thought of doing is flipping it 180 degrees. That way it's, it's contour kind of fits the back side of the inner fender. And that way I still can mount it low enough for the hood shots. And I made sure to space it off of this inner rail so that the hood shock has a place to go. 
But I, I built these kind of cheap brackets out of some C channel. I painted them up. Not a whole lot of money invested in it, but it took probably a couple hours to make everything right. I used factory mounting locations, so everything was pretty straightforward. Uh, it's pretty easy if you have a welder, a grinder, and a cutoff wheel, you can do the exact same thing. So about that intake, since I'm using a different air box and I didn't want to mount it to a flat piece of metal, I had to cut a hole in the inner fender here. This was probably the hardest thing I've done on this swap. Now it wasn't hard because it was challenging, it was hard because this is like sacrilege to me. I just do not like modifying vehicles in this way, but I mean, I kind of already have an LS in here. So not the end of the world. Uh, took just a second with a cutoff wheel. I probably could have done it a little cleaner, but I did what I had to do. And the reason it's shaped this way is I made a stencil using the factory 5.3 Tahoe or Silverado air box, which I've also trimmed some stuff out of. So this kind of fits perfectly inside of here. Uh, I also mounted it with only one bracket here. I drilled some holes in the side. The main reason for that is that the engine's going to move while it's running. You know, when you're on and off load, uh, it, it does flex a little bit. That's why your radiator hoses are rubber. Since I have a solid intake pipe, which I'll cover in a second, I want things to kind of be able to move a little bit so it doesn't have a tendency to pull something apart or rip something. So I have it mounted with one bracket. That's it. And it also kind of fits in this whole... I don't really see that there being an issue with this, and if there is, it's going to be like it cracks the airbox, and then I'll go get another one from the junkyard, and I'll start over again. So this is the intake that I have come up with, is the intake pipe. First off, this is a coupler designed for LS engines. It's got a really tight radius, so it fits quite well. I think it's a Spectre brand. They're pretty cheap, 20, 30 bucks. And then this is a four inch hump coupler. Now the reason I got a hump coupler is you can kind of flex it and it can kind of change the angle of the pipe and then you don't have to have like a tube at kind of cockeyed. These are apparently only readily available in blue, which I've got a black one that'll be here at some point, but I wanted to get this done and these are probably 10 or 15 bucks. And the pipe, the pipe, the pipe is from a 99 to 06 uh, new body style Chevy truck, like a cat eye or the previous generation. It's just a cold air intake off of Amazon, like one of those really cheap ones and I cut a whole bunch of stuff off of it to make it shorter so that everything fit. To use this, however, I had to put a spacer ring on the factory airbox because this is three and three quarter inch and all of this is four inch. So that was the best I could do. I, I know that there's probably a better way of doing this. However, everything seems to fit pretty well. Uh, and it, again, you have to remember, you have to have clearance for, you have to have some clearance for this. Uh, I just like, Kind of like so you have to have clearance for this upper radiator hose that's the biggest thing so obviously i don't have it clamped down and i also need to add a fitting in here for the crankcase ventilation off of the passenger side valve cover again these are kind of small details i'm just kind of showing you where i'm at also i redid the upper radiator hose i did not really like the way i had a small metal pipe in the middle of it this way it flexes a little bit better i used part of a radiator hose from like a four liter Mountaineer and the other side of the hose is a Trailblazer 5.3 hose I think just stuff I had laying around so that's kind of where we're at so as you can tell it's moving along rather well I'm pretty happy with the progress albeit I have spent a lot of time on it I've been ignoring literally everything else I've got stuff stacked up that I don't even know when I'm gonna get to but this truck has to be running and driving at least before snow falls, hopefully my target date in like, oh crap, I'm not going to make it later this month, but we'll find out. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe. The next video will be in probably a week or so, and I got to tackle the exhaust and get the factory oil pressure sending unit in so the gauge works, and then the AC, which I've been kind of putting off till last because it is the least important. Summer is a long ways away. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe. Talk to you guys later.